I wish to conclude our meeting by saying this, began Karl Franz. You have performed well in your duties for me, but I would have you personally see to it that Maestro is gone on that river barge tonight. Tobias bowed emphatically. Of course, Your Excellency, was his response. The only way I can be sure of it is for you to depart with him. The Emperor added. The colour drained out of the halfling's face. You are to travel with him now, on his journey of uh, self-discovery. Seeing as you so excellently dealt with our own internal problem together. It was clear that Tobias was not taking the news of this very well at all. The Emperor added, It has already been arranged. Your college masters and I agree that it would be for the best. Also, you will be serving a second purpose for them. Magnamus, Maestro's master, had come to the docks to see them off. They were about to board the barge as the kindly but somewhat unstable Master Wizard clapped his hands around his student's shoulders. Perhaps this will be good for you, eh, Maestro? Perhaps, came Maestro's sullen reply. His master continued, You always had such great potential. Do you remember how you were top of the class amongst the apprentices? You picked up the first level spells quicker than anyone I had ever seen. Quicker even than I, when I was first starting. Maestro nodded sadly. Magnamus continued, After that, though, something went Arrive for you. It is clear that this is the only way for you to advance now. And remember, if you do not, Sinch is waiting to steal away the ignorance. You do not want to spend an eternity covered in bird droppings, do you? Maestro had seen all the bird droppings he could stand in one lifetime often being forced to clean the great telescopic lenses of his college of them for failing tests and exams. Magnamus continued, Or worse still, you could become a chaos spawn! Maestro rolled his eyes at Magnamus' 100,000th chaos spawn routine, or so he felt. Suddenly, the old man's face took on a serious expression. Maestro! Uh, chaos army, the like of which has not been seen in hundreds of years, has entered the Empire. The reports you will have heard about the invasion are far more terrible than we have even told the public. The Emperor himself rides at the column head of his army, leaving today to join the fight. I have been called upon to aid his forces. Archaeon the Everchosen comes to wreak Great vengeance upon the people he used to call his own. He too used to be a human, like you or I. It is another terrible example of the power that chaos holds over all souls of people. Always remember that. Even with the best of intentions, one might still find a path to chaos. Maestro looked sombre at this. I... I should have been there to stand by your side, shouldn't I? He asked. Perhaps, answered Magnamus. But you are not trained enough to come to the front lines. You would not be allowed in any case. Maestro looked to the ground shamefully. Magnamus continued. Don't worry. We will do everything we can. But we are fighting to preserve a future, Maestro. If we succeed in this final battle, you and your generation need to stand ready to take the flaming baton. I will learn, I swear it, promised Maestro. The kindly old wizard put a hand on Maestro's shoulder. I know you will. There is more inside you than even you realize. Before giving Maestro a knowing wink. This made the apprentice wizard think and worry. He hated the thought of responsibility, but knew that it was also unavoidable in this case. Therefore, he would be better prepared and better able to survive the trials to come, if he took at least that fact seriously, he decided. Lysandrius smiled inwardly at the touching moment between the two. 
Just then they were joined by Tobias, wearing a fully packed backpack. Tobias, come to see us off, asked Rissandria. Not quite, replied the halfling. With a heavy sigh, he continued. I have been instructed by the emperor himself <laughs> to attend to your training. Magnamus added, I was wondering what they would do about that. Ah, yes, that makes sense now, Tobias continued. Normally your master, Magnamus, before bowing respectfully to the master wizard, who returned his bow with a slow and purposeful nod, would accompany you on your training to attain the journeyman level. However, there is your unusual little, um, problem as well, isn't there? Yes. Well, started Maestro. I saw a doctor about that, and it turned out I was just sleeping on the wrong sort of mattress, and... No, Maestro, came the halfling's incensed reply. Your magical problem, the issue of your empathic channeling. Were the great magnanimous, again the halfling and master wizard, repeated their bowing routine, to accompany you, sooner or later it would affect your own spell casting. You would be drawing power from his law, not your own. Tobias couldn't even believe he was saying this. It truly sounded strange that a student could suffer these effects so strongly. He continued, though, It would not be a demonstration of your powers to certify past or not, would it? It would be a foreign influence. I am trained in the magical studies of heavens, maestro, and I have no magical channeling whatsoever. I will be your assessor, making notes, and ultimately it will be... My recommendation that decides whether you are ready or not for the next level of wizardry. The last point he made quite smugly. Maestro hated the fact that he would be accompanied by the halfling. This was terrible. He didn't like someone looking over his shoulder or, or trying to on tiptoes at the very least. Watching his every move, waiting for him to do something wrong. His stomach filled with dread on a whole new level at the thought of this journey. Tobias continued, After the further consultation with my fellow masters at the college, it has been decided that the rules governing the future and fate must be obeyed. Therefore, I am strictly forbidden to make suggestions that could affect the decisions you make. Your fate, and ultimately your success or failure, must be wholly of your own doing. You may ask of me what you will. My knowledge is yours. I will fight if my own life is in danger. But in no way may I influence your decisions. Is that understood? Maestro said, Yes, quite flatly in his tone. He thought the entire thing sounded ridiculous. But then that was to be expected from the Celestial College. They knew things about the future. The entire basis of their methods was based on the understanding of cosmological fate. He realised that having this thought of non-understanding of the order made him stand out even worse as an apprentice, but luckily he had said it internally. That didn't stop Magnama smiling at him wryly, though. Somehow his master was often able to read his thoughts. He knew him better than anyone, in fact. Even his own mother and father. Oh, his parents. He was leaving them behind in the city, too. He had at least had a chance to say his goodbyes to his father. Morslieb was large in the sky, larger than normal. It looked every bit like it was ready to assault the larger moon, Manslieb, at any moment. It was a foreboding night. Something in the air was different.